Alrighty, in this one we are going to use Notion buttons and we are going to create a selection system where you can quick and bulk select relevant database properties by select them. Most of today is going to be using button. I'm going to use the simple add a database entry to. I've created a very basic database here so we have a name date, person, status, multi-select, and checkbox property. The only one I'll rename is the checkbox to select, as this is going to be our primary mechanism to select database properties based on specifications in these buttons that we create. So again, if we want to create a new database entry, we do the add page, make sure we select the, the right one. Nothing complicated, right? Obviously, it's helpful to create a new work entry. Maybe we can do that. The real selecting of database entries comes from this one property that we created here. And when you create a new button and you edit a page, right, you can select the database that you want to edit in. The very most important part of the button is specifying the filters that we want to create when it comes to editing whatever, changing deleting any database entry. If we don't apply this filter, if I remove it, everything you create in the button applies to all pages in work, right? And that doesn't make a lot of sense. You have many work entries and you don't need to modify all of them at once. In some cases we do, but we're going to create a different, different filter so that we're not going to rely on just all. We're going to start with date is empty. When the date is empty, please let us know these entries. Let's start with this very basic one here. And again, the filters, although they might seem a little tedious at first, they should be one of the only ways that you should think about customizing buttons because learning how to filter and know how to filter is going to be integral to making Notion button experience better, as well as having more of a sequential sequence or a workflow. I think when you're trying to set that up, combinational buttons are can be huge. Putting them in a database template on Notion can also be very valuable. And I think in the future, we'll probably be able to weave buttons and other features like Notion automations together. Anyways, date is empty. We want to select it. Because we are creating a button that says date is empty, we will want to look at the date property. And the date is empty, right? So where date is empty, we're filtering based on that criteria now, and so we're not selecting all the database entries, but just where the date is empty. Now that we've set that filter up, we can create that modification to the select property in which we are going to check it. The reason why we're doing this is because we are going to create another view in which selected view. Pretty simple, nothing extravagant. We can basically just duplicate view we already have and then again here right this is where buttons and filters are very they need to work in unison right so we want to filter select database properties that have been selected with the check and basically what we're, we're going to create a new work entry and notice how now my name shows up because we added that button feature the date is empty right both of these are both empty. And so now when we click on this data is empty button that we've just customized, see what happens. Boom. Notice how the select fields are selected. And notice how it appears in the selected view. As we have filtered out, there is no date. So that's pretty helpful. Let's, let's do another one. What's very nice with this selection system that we're creating is you can basically just duplicate the button change the filter in which matches the criteria that you're looking for. So in this case, if person is not empty, right? How about that? Person assigned. I mean, it's always easy to just change the icon set, right? Why not? And notice how easy it was to create this button. So when we want to see all the work entries in which a person is assigned, we can just click on this button like we've configured here, right? All we're basically doing is using the select property that we've configured and then creating a filter within a button in which we want to select that relevant property in which we've specified the criteria of. we've created this person assigned in this case because data is empty has already been specified and we've selected it i'm going to deselect it 
deselect these so we can illustrate the person assigned button, right? A real quick notion hack that I like to share is if you hover to the top left corner of your table view under the database title or under the view name, a little blank square appears. And when you click on that, it selects everything in that view. And I think it's hugely underrated and it allows you to bulk edit properties like most people probably have tried to do at some point. In this case, when I clicked on the buttons, it tells you how many entries are being selected and then it pops up the properties that are relevant to these database entries. So if we want to modify the select field, I just did that by clicking there, modify the date. It basically pops up like you would in a regular database view, but now you're modifying it to database entries at a time, like it says here. Now that we've removed the select, and I showed you how to do that via the bulk edit function, located at the top left corner of your table view, let's work this person assigned button. We're going to create a new work entry. There's only two entries in which people are assigned. And there's one that isn't. So now if we go to the selected view and we click on this, bam, boom, person entry is not empty. What we see in the selected view is what we've selected. Let's go a little further. All we're going to do is change the name, the icon set, and the filter, and that's all we really need to do. So when I refer to mark as done, it's going to be a status property. The status is going to be in the complete section. You could do singular tags. In this case, there's only one status tag. To test this out again, we got to deselect these entries, right? And we could do this with the bulk edit, do that. But we can also create another button. And we're going to call it the reset button. And basically, we're going to do it so we're going to remove all checkmark properties in the database. So in this case, this is a rare scenario in which we don't have to change this editing filter like we have. We can leave it as is, right? We're just going to click on select and we're going to make everything unchecked. Let's select all the entries in which the date is empty. Click on the button. Boom. We have three entries in which the date there. We can also bulk select change that date in unison, right? See how fast that was? The bulk edit, I think, is an additional function that folks should consider using in tandem with this button selection system because so you can make bulk edits even quicker. You can also drag select and a similar thing happens. What you could also do is select by individual rows and then you can also right click and then do stuff like this, which is very similar right? But it's more condensed in a menu format and it doesn't hover. And then we can also use this reset button that we just made here, right? And see what happens here. So that basically resets it so that this table view remains empty. And so every time you're done using a button, and you're like, okay, I see which ones and which people are assigned. Okay, let's just reset it. Okay, let's see which ones are marked done. All right, let's just do one real quick with that, right? Oh, there's two work entries on which people are assigned. Good to know. Let's reset it. Which work entries are marked done? Let's check. Oh, looks like it's just that one. Oh, and you know, the deadlines are coming up. So let's, let's check out the dates. Are dates filled out for these entries? Oh, shoot. None of these dates are filled. Let's just update that real quick. Let me get for the 14th next week. Let's one day before, and there you go, right? I just added a reminder for all of these work entries through the date property that we were able to modify via the bulk edit feature that we were able to select via the buttons that we set up here. This is a very simple video because buttons are complicated or they can get complicated and you can do a lot more with them. But this is sort of a intro to buttons video using sort of a button selection system as an example in which you could do quick and bulk select. If you're sort of working off of a bigger database in your company, this is like a perfect example in which you could create your own view, you know, just a single select property and then create these buttons for yourself 
so that you can quickly sift through, sort information, do whatever you need to do within a Notion database in a very quick manner, right? And I think, like I said in previous videos, we've just touched the surface with these Notion buttons. But I do feel like buttons have allow you to integrate a more user-friendly approach to Notion in which you can simplify a lot of menial tasks or creations or clicks. And I think it provides an opportunity for people who don't know as much about Notion to take their understanding further as well as sort of mastering how you can make these data properties work for you whether that's for personal use or business use or for enterprise use. If you haven't integrated buttons into your current system or your current Notion template, I strongly urge you to do so. I do feel like buttons are only going to get more powerful, and they already are powerful, right? So I hope that this video showed you that a little bit. Stay tuned for another YouTube video, maybe this later this week, showcasing how these buttons go even deeper. Right. I'm going to be trying a few new sort of recording softwares and editing things. And I know these videos aren't top quality like you see on YouTube, but I think that's not really the point. It's I hope that I can sort of broaden the, your understanding and landscape of Notion video by video. And hopefully by watching a few of these, you can kind of create something of your own that feels organic and interactive and interesting. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't subscribed already, that'd be much appreciated. The YouTube analytics is telling me that 95% of you all watching are not subscribed, and so if you'd like to continue your Notion learning journey in a medium to long-term lens, yeah, give me a like or subscribe or comment, and yeah, thanks for watching.